Oh, let's look at some. Um, let's look at what I would call linking sounds. Now, typically, what I've done is picked a track that has relatively few linking sounds in it. But I just want to talk to you about what a linking sound is. It's this white thing here, and it's this white thing here. So the first linking sound. Interest up and um, announcing the, the onset of the next musical phrase, the next eight-bar phrase. Um, people just always tend to ask me at the middle school, how do you create sounds like this? And again, it's relatively simple in that if you're lazy, as I am, as we found out today, um, you can just pick these sounds out of a sample pack. And again, if I go into the Vengeance sample pack, there's a whole folder dedicated to effects, and these effects Things like hall kicks, so big kick drums with loads of reverb on, or you know, sub kicks with loads of reverb on, reverse sound, <coughs> slides, that sort of thing, uplifters, downlifters. You can find them all in sample packs. You can create them yourself, but you know, if you're lazy or in a rush, you can pick them out of sample packs. So just quickly want to show you how what, to what yeah, what would you create then if you wanted to create them? Well, in terms of <coughs> Because I was, I go through like loads of sample packs, but I can never find decent ones. So I mean, I find all these risers and that, but they're just shit. To be honest, they're, they really are. They're just. just well, let's let's create um, a white noise sweep from scratch. Again, let's go back to old reliable. Let's go back to analog uh, instruments. Analog. <laughs> Now it's got its own dedicated noise generator here which you can turn on or one of the oscillators you could change into a noise generator. Right, so the first thing we need to do to that is change the envelope. Because at the moment there's a finite period on that note. So I'm going to turn the sustain all the way up and then the decay time doesn't actually matter what that is and now we get that sort of effect mm. so the longer note you draw in obviously that white noise will be held uh, thereafter what you could do is turn on the filter um, you could choose either a low pass high pass doesn't really matter Depends on what effect you're going for. Uh, turn the resonance up. Do that. Is that what you sort of yeah. So white noise basically, yeah, contains every every frequency in the spectrum, and you're just filtering that off while adding a bit of resonance to get that sweeping. Could add delay to that, you could have reverb to that, make it nice and big. Um, you know, um, you know how you hear on quite a few house tracks, you get that um, sort of dip in white noise as well. Like so, it's like a sh oh, side, side chain. chain. Yeah, yeah side is, that, chain. is that just that's what I was going to say? Is that just side chain, or could you do it through like rooting the resonance and the frequency together, so that you could sort of dip it in a way that they both sort of come up at the same sort of time? Uh, it's just much easier to do it with the side chain. That's yeah. generally how it will be done. Uh, although you could, yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose you could do it with it's not the You could do it with an eye. Easy to do with a side chain. Do you know how to set up a side chain? Uh, not on Ableton. Uh, just turn that LFO off. Then would you just use the 
or to the floor kick, or would you use interesting rhythms to side chain? Well, I'd probably just use the full to the floor kick and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so you have to use like a ghost kick that you don't hear, or do you just, just use, use the <coughs> ghost kick, or you can use the main kick? Um, more often than not, I'll just use the main kick. Where's my drums? Far too much on the go now. Right. <laughs> What it's handy to do, right, I'm going to get a compressor, uh, drop it onto the analogue track. That's what the compressor looks like now. Um, there's three different ways of looking at it. Um, there is that way, there's the classic way from Live 8, and then there's this way which shows you the incoming transients, and this is the threshold, and it's quite handy to get a visual uh, feedback Pardon me, get visual feedback on what it's actually doing to the uh, the, the incoming audio material. <coughs> so I'm going to, in fact, I'll leave it leave it like that. Um, turn the side chain on. Now, if I tell this to listen to is it impulse seven, um, if I tell it to listen to impulse. <laughs> Compressor is looking for the entire output of impulse. Um, now you can EQ the side chain. So you're just hearing the kick like that. You see how the compressor is just listening to the kick, or it's just listening to the frequency spectrum of the kick. If you turn it off, you can see the difference. It's listening to everything. Or what you can do is use a bit of cunning routing to separate off the kick from impulse. So to do this, make yourself a new audio track. And on that audio track, in fact, let's just keep it, keep it neat and tidy. I'm going to call that audio track Kick. I'm going to tell that audio track to listen to Impulse, first of all. And more specifically, I'm going to tell it to listen to the Kick from Impulse. So using those two chooser boxes, audio from, Impulse at the top, and then Kick from the bottom. Finally, to hear that, I need to turn the monitor button to in. That passes the track's incoming signal to its output, and hence you'll be able to hear it, hopefully. Yes. Hello. Is there a particular reason that you use impulse at all? Because I just find you don't need to do anything. Uh, like yeah, because drum Adrian drum. is teaching you all about drum racks later on, so I don't want to step on his toes. So you, do you not <laughs> use impulse then? Um, I use impulse when I want to um, separate out signals for using with hardware, if I wanted to compress okay. kick drum using hardware, uh, it's just easy to use input. Okay. Drum rack's great if you're doing all your programming inside the box, all your mix down inside the box. Um, yeah. Looks really it's, out of the machine. Yeah. You, yeah. Uh, and now what we can do is go back to our white noise track, which is there, I think. Yeah. And now the compressor, rather than telling it to listen to impulse, I'm going to tell it to listen to kick. And then just set some compression settings. So that is, you can see the grey is the incoming signal. Uh, the uh, yellowy line you can see there, that's what the compressor is doing to your signal. It's quiet enough for that. Ooh. Uh, does that answer your yeah, question? Yeah, that's, that's cool. Fun. So, linking sounds. Um, yeah, let's go back to the to the maxi sound system. Now in this track he, you can see he's used precious few linking sounds. What he does at the end of each eight bar phrase is like I say just do something slightly different. So whether that's just a double kick on the kick drum, whether he drops it out for a couple of beats uh, or whether he puts another random sample in there like there's one of somebody coughing. Just some way of introducing uh, one musical phrase uh, or, or making the transition from one musical phrase to the next. Um, so there's uplifters, downlifters, you could use crashes, you could use reverse crashes, 
you could use interesting sounds like that. Um, let me start off with, let's go for some random effect sound. I'm just going to add this to the Maxi Sound System track, seeing as that's already arranged and everything. Um, what I would tend to do is do the majority of the arranging, or the majority of the uh, getting together of ideas in session view. Then I would record an arrangement like this, and then the last piece of the pie is adding all these icing on the cake type sounds. And I'll do this in arrangement view, and I'll just drag and drop them straight into arrangement view and then manipulate them from there. So, let's have a quick look at some of those. So if you wanted to make a sound like that, that is obviously just a nice crash cymbal with a big bit of reverb and then there's another sound in the background with a little bit of delay on it. So you can quite easily make that, but it's already made for you. Nice 24-bit sample. So. And that might work with the track. So that is like yeah. an imp impact sound. I'm going to leave that running forward. Some of these sounds I'm going to reverse them. And the reverse sounds need to finish on the downbeat of the bar um, that. Oh, sorry, hold on. Right. <laughs> the re yeah, the reverse sounds need to finish on the downbeat of the bar that you'd like them to, to, them to finish on. Sounds like that happen from the downbeat onwards. I'll show you what I mean. So let's add this sound at the beginning of bar 17. So it's very simple. All you've got to do is get the sound, drag and drop it, so that the start of the sound is on the downbeat of bar 17. I'm just going to attenuate the volume of that just so it's not overpowering. And let's have a listen to that. So, with sounds like that, it doesn't matter whether they're warped or not, you can turn warp off, uh, or if you want them to last a specific amount of time, you can turn warp on and use warp markers to stretch them to that particular time. Let me find another sound. All a bit severe. Now uh, let's go in here, this will be uh, sweeps and hits, this will be all together more. This is from that spin media pack. There you go, lovely, lovely, nice bit of disco. So I'm just going to drag and drop that. And let's pop that, let's pop that there at the beginning of uh, bar 33. Let's just have a listen to that. Sound system would appreciate it if I added a few more sounds for him and sent it back and said, This is how it should be. Right. What happens if you want to um, introduce reverse sounds? Sometimes these can be a little bit more tricky to work with. Yeah, that's a good one. Let's go for something like that. I'm going to drag and drop that in. And the problem here is that because it's such a short sound, um, live hasn't attempted to warp it, and hence, at this sort of zoom level, just close the browser, at this sort of zoom level, it's going to be hard to position that. You know, we need to butt that right up to that sound there. And unless we zoom right in, which is a time consuming process, and even when we zoom in, it's not a nice even length. There's your, your bar grid, and that is ever so slightly longer than half a bar, which is what we're looking at at the moment. So to make this a little bit easier to work with when you're quickly trying to just drop a few sounds into a range, what I would do is turn warp on, first of all, and to gauge the nearest sort of decent fraction of a bar that it is uh, closest to. So for example, this is ever so slightly longer than two beats or half a bar. There's half a bar. So what I would there on the side of doing is placing a warp marker here and squashing that together just so it's two beats long. 
that is going to squeeze it as well. It's going to squeeze it a little bit. Um, I suppose what we could also do is... Turn the first one off after you put the back one. Say yeah. again, sorry. If you put the watermarker there, and then after that point turn the f uh, click the first watermarker off, when you move it, it will just move it along because there's only one watermarker. True, and true, but it. to be honest, that amount of squashing is not really going to be that yeah. much of a discernible difference in, in sound. And it, 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 like squashing stuff together, there's never that much of a problem. It's when you yeah. start to um, pull stuff apart, when you start to stretch it away from its original beats per minute. So, something like that. So that is now um, half a bar in length. Yeah, if you want it to, you could. But then you're sort of chopping off the beginning of the sound. So if you want the whole of the sound in there, you need to make it a nice even length. And now what you can do is resize the, uh, the actual clip in arrangement to be half a bar. And now that makes your life a bit easier when you're trying to do that. But to make it even easier to work with, because you can, uh, what live does is it remembers where you've placed that in the bar. So if I hold alt, drag and drop, and I want to stick one there, there, then it will remember that. Um, but what it can be handy to do is if you want that, for example, every eight bars, drag a box around those eight bars like that, including your hit, and just press Command-J or consolidate from the edit menu, and that will make you a nice, even eight bar, eight bar clip. And if you want it every eight bars, you can just then hit Command-D, and it will just give you that nice reverse sound every eight bars, and you don't need to... sound in there, I'm going to tell him. Um, but it saves you going in and, um, you know, sort of trying to trying to be all fiddly with it. If you make a nice eight bar uh, clip, then you can just go Command D, Command D and just duplicate that to your heart's content. Um, so in a nutshell, working with reverse sounds or sounds that haven't been uh, warped because they're so short, uh, turn warp on, find the nearest half bar or full bar stretch them out or squash them together to fill that space and then you can resize the clip in arrangement view uh, and then like I said if you well if you wanted that to be every 16 bars you could drag a box around it just hit command J which is consolidate or you can select consolidate from the uh, from the edit menu brilliant right uh, that my friends is is about that um, does anyone have any questions or anything specific that they would like to... Um, just quickly about that consolidate. Yeah. Um, can that, like, say you've made an audio cut, right, and you want to put two bit, like, say you've made a new melody out of a sample you've already took, um, and you want to put it back together as one thing, is that what consolidate Yeah, that's do what you well? do, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, it's like, like merging on one. Yeah, like it merges yeah. it together. Ah, yeah. oh, sick. Yeah. Yeah. And then what you can do is, is then get hold of that brand new clip that you've made, drag it through into, into session view, and just have it as a... Oh, I dragged and dropped it onto the wrong, uh, wrong track, but um, that's another... Oh, so when you do that, it tries to convert it. It tries to convert it, yeah. That's the that's new Live 9 behaviour. It, it'll either convert it into a melody, which is monophonic, harmony, which is polyphonic, or, or drums. Uh, but obviously if you get hold of that and drag and drop it onto an audio track, which is what I wanted to do in the first place, you can then use that as, as an eight bar loop in a performance or you know, you can um, use that in a, in a future live set, whatever it is. Yeah. Going back to where we started, do you know when you're listening to a track and you're trying to deconstruct it, have you got yeah. any tips for how you can sort of isolate different parts of it and you're thinking, I just can't... Uh, yes. Um, one bottle of Stella Artois, just to sort of, <laughs> yeah, just so you're not thinking about things too much, and then you've just got to really try and, try yeah, and no listen, sort of just try don't mess about with EQ, or just sort of you can try and mess about with EQ, but there's only so far you can, you know, there's only so far you can take EQ, so for example, for example, let me just uh, get rid of these tracks, Let's 
it's obviously easiest to start off with the drums and then the bass yeah. and then the main instruments, uh, like synthesizers. You shouldn't have a problem. Shouldn't have a problem with that. Where it gets tricky, I suppose, is trying to pick out things like the go gos or the, the cow, uh, cowbells. And that bit. Mm. That did it did it. Sort of bell type sounds. Mm. This one here. Did you sort of hear it in the background? Um, but I would say don't necessarily worry if you can't isolate no. and identify every single sound. What you're looking for here is um, a pattern, you yeah. know, a, a, a blueprint for the general structure of a track. And then as long as you know that something new or different is supposed to happen every eight bars, you can just mm. add, add what you feel is necessary. So what I'm saying here is although he's put... Uh, a cowbelly type thing at bar 57, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, you know, it's just to show you uh, a track that has worked in a club that has been released on a, on a you know, a, a label that's doing very well for, it, for itself uh, and how you might be able to emulate that if you're having trouble writing music. But the other thing is don't try and, I suppose, stick to well-trodden ground too much, otherwise... No, no, it's just... Yeah, again, just like you said, with the, I was trying to work out a rhythm. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Anybody else? The, earth, sorry, another question. That's set out as a recording. If you were to take that out and try and perform it live, would you make any changes to it? Um, so you could sort of put into scenes or what, so you could change, was there any structure to the track? Yeah, well, I mean, you can, you can completely dictate the structure of a live performance, even though it's been arranged in this fashion. You could, you know, start out with a breakdown um, mm. and then sort of build it up, build it up rather yeah. than coming with drums. Brilliant feature, another brilliant feature. Live Nine um, allows you to to do, which used to take a little bit of time before. But what you can do is select a portion of time, and I hope I'm getting this right because I only looked at this the other day. You can select a portion of time. You don't have to select all the material there, but you can select a portion of time. Right click. And pick the option cons consolidate time to new scene. Oh, okay. And what this will do is take um, every track that's got a clip for those four bars and make you a new scene out of that next door. So you can literally take your arrangement and then put it into verse, chorus, etc. Yeah, exactly. Like there you go. So there's the, there's the scene that I've just picked out. Go back next door, say we wanted to... Where's the breakdown? There, so say we wanted to start with the breakdown. Select those, uh, those eight bars. Right click, consolidate time to new scene. Let's go back next door. And there is my breakdown. Brilliant. That used to, obviously, before that feature, what you had to do was go in select that bit, get hold of it, press tab, do that, or well, I suppose you could do it for the whole arrangement like yeah, that, take you ages. but it'd just take you ages, yeah. But if you write music in the way that I write music anyway, which is to start out in session view, uh, get all your ideas to that, it, it, it got, get all your ideas together in that first before recording an arrangement, then it's already there. It's already there. Yeah. But <coughs> to start working in um, arrangement view, like you would do, I suppose, if you were, you know, used to Logic or whatever, or you had written a track in Logic, but you wanted to perform it using Live, you would import the stems into Live, and then you could just select the time, consolidate a new scene. It's a very quick way of splitting up your arrangement. And, but yeah, in terms of performing, you can perform it in whatever order you want, <coughs> and you could add extra bits over the top of that if you wanted as well. Yeah. Such is such is Live. Anybody? Anything else? Like I said, if anyone wants what I've been working on here to take away, all those uh, analog presets and this this um, blueprint for this piece of music, then please drop me your email. Uh, just a shameless sales pitch. Um, like I say, Lucy and I are coming today from Manchester Midi School. Uh, we're a private music college based in Manchester, and. We offer loads of different courses, uh, some down at the school obviously, in music production, audio engineering and DJing. Um, also online courses, currently there's a third of all our online courses, one of which is a 
comprehensive 12 week look at, at live if anyone's interested in that come in there, find us and talk to us after um, courses range like I say from this 12 week course one day up to a year in length so yeah if anyone's interested please just come and have a chat with us now we'll be hanging around for the next half hour or so so thank you very much for listening I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day Thank you.